pasture. And you know, our beloved pets and horses and cats and dogs, they only have hindsight memory. Whereas we have the ability to plan, set goals, right? Abstract thinking. That's all frontal cortical stuff. Those skills or those abilities require a de greater degree of synchronized activity to perform optimally. So when we're in this desync state, they're the ones that are impacted the hardest. Any of you, anybody in here ever be in dialogue with maybe one of your friends or parents or whatever, brothers and sisters, and they said or do something that kind of pisses you off a little bit, and then you said or did something that like a minute later you're going, oh my God, I can't believe I just said or did that? Anybody ever done that? I mean, come on. <laughs> Today? <laughs> This is the physiology of it, guys. When we're desynced, we... OK, but it even could be me in a cab in Manhattan going, I may not make my flight. That's right. And then my ability to That's right. figure out what I'm going to do next is being compromised. Exactly. Exactly. Which is why I got on the wrong train. <laughs> yeah, right. No, that's exactly right. It's why we do stupid things. Right. We're, you know, we're, we're basically reacting more from the subcortical areas. Yeah. So, so the takeaway message is stress inhibits physical and mental performance. Yeah, emotion. Let's, let's take it right down to what stress is. Negative emotions, impatience, irritation. You know, let's okay. really get real about what this stuff is. Yeah. But when we exercise, which is a state of stress, the opposite happens. Well, I wouldn't say that exercise is a state of stress. You wouldn't? No, I mean, you're, that, you're, it's a ch I, I prefer the word challenge. We take on, a t we're challenging, we're, you know, um, Right? That's why we set deadlines. It's a challenge. It's not necessarily, it's only stressful to how we perceive it. I, I, I just think that it's like a different use of language. Yeah. Like, uh, you're looking at like mental anguish of stress. Yeah. Right? Yeah, or negative or emotions. Yeah. Sort of like, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I could go into a whole lot more of it on, on that. I mean, I'm, just, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm visualizing a lot about what you're talking about, how 9% pushing up, 10% yeah. pushing down, and what you're saying is that negative emotional stress sends signals up to inhibit cognitive yeah, performance. Right, right. But when we exercise, there's just it's one it, direction. No, that's not true either. I mean, it's, it's really two different, you know, if I was going to draw some bubbles up here, we, we would have our physical resiliency, and then there's mental, emotional, spiritual. They're all kind of, it's kind of apples and oranges in a way, um, for, to, for what I'm talking about here, yeah. I mean, if you're really into your workout, you're, you're in a very positive state about it. I mean, if you're having to exercise and you really hate it, you know, then you're in this mode I'm talking about, because it's, I hope that helps a little bit, yeah. If you love what you're doing, right? I mean, it's like two people on the roller coaster is a great example from what we mean by stress. One person's, yay, and the other person's, yeah. right? Same event, but completely different perceptions of it, yeah. So I'm thinking of a case where like, someone's running for their life, and like, you know, it's clearly a state of like, mental anguish, mm -hmm. but Well, in that case, but in that case, that, that is your classic, you know, yeah, right. I mean, you don't need, you're not trying to solve math problems or think, I mean, in that case, you really, but you are just understanding that in that situation, you, you're optimizing certain physical things. You know, the, your blood pressure's up, the cortisol's pumping to run away, but you're not really. As you run for your life, it'd be a different story. Okay. Yeah, you're not necessarily going to make very intelligent decisions either, you know. I would argue because of sort of the you know um, hand frustrations you get, mm -hmm. then telling you this is the right deck or this is the risky deck, and through that actually enhancing the performance on recognizing which cards are uh, which deck is better to pick out. Are you familiar with that? I am. Yeah, yeah I am. But let me, let me hold that one because I'm okay. I'm already like sure. ten minutes. To, yeah. We've done actually some even cooler studies you know, on okay. related to that. So basically, a lot of research now has shown that coherence and incoherence are directly, uh, in a causally way, related to uh, brain function. Memory, reaction times, even test scores in high school students, things like that. Uh, kind of the point I was making a little bit a little ago is that relaxation and coherence are not the same state. Okay, 
coherence is really that optimal state, optimal physiological state for learning, performance, these kinds of things. Uh, relaxation requires, by definition, a reduction in heart.